Hello and welcome to Climate Culture, the Art of Becoming Sustainable. I'd like to thank Onassis Stecky, who have curated and produced these events, and for I'd like to also thank you for our long-term partnership. My name is Alison Tickell and I'm the founder and director of Julie's Bicycle. I'm going to start by stating the obvious. Culture really can change the world. We all know this. We follow our hearts more than our heads and we orient to the familiar, friends, family, and the well-worn furniture of our interior lives. In short, our culture, our values. So it's entirely logical and sensible to mediate the climate and nature crisis through, with, and by culture. It is so obvious. But it hasn't been, not to the climate community, nor to the cultural community. Why not? Well, in seeking answers, we must look to ourselves. My view is that the arts and culture as a whole, the very purpose and values that underpin our collective assumptions, the system itself could do with a very serious reboot. Examining the way we work, the processes, structures, practices that make up the system is a very good route to illuminating what values lie beneath. In other words, the why. Julie's Bicycle has been exploring this question for almost 15 years, working with thousands of arts and cultural organisations to one pick at our cultural boundaries, to see where our constraints lie, to see how we are responding to the context in which we work. And that context is a context that is bounded by our environment, by our climate. We've recognised that we need to fundamentally rethink how we work. Net zero in buildings, tours, festivals, of course, restoring nature, and especially now, examining what justice and fairness really mean in cultural practice. It is so causal in why we've got to where we are and in how we take it forward. And here's the difficult bit. Culture, the why, of creative economy, of arts, of culture and cultural heritage has too often been designed or coerced to serve the values of the consumption-based economic order for the already wealthy few. This is at the heart of the climate crisis. It also is what makes it a cultural crisis. But herein lies the opportunity too. Culture is always disrupted, it's always energized, it's spoken to truths more than lies, it connects to people, to communities, to hearts. So that's where we can really unleash our potential. Apart from creative experiences themselves, which I'll come to later, I think that there are three key and connected drivers. The first, of driver of change is policy, the slowest to change, but the fastest to affect change. Policy is a golden thread. I know it works because in 2012, Arts Council England, which distributes around 600 million euros, made it a contractual obligation for 800 or so organizations to annually report their environmental impacts. Julie's Bicycle has had the privilege of delivering this program. And since then, we've co-produced with the sector culturally specific carbon calculators, which map ourselves across to uh, climate change, and the largest how-to resource library anywhere. And all of this has been co-produced with the cultural community. Interestingly, no one was asked to reduce their emissions, only to measure them. And the results speak for themselves, around 23 million euros in savings and 35% redu reductions in energy. This does speak to the more you know, the more you do, and the more you do, the more you know. Now the partnership is more demanding, including science-based targets and net zero commitments for larger grantees and to bring key themes together a focus on creative climate justice. As a model, it makes sense, it's logical, and it could be adopted and rolled out. Indeed, in many places, similar ideas are being developed. But of course, policy is only as good as the people implementing it. So the second key priority is to radically rethink cultural curricula, training, skills, and who gets to benefit from them. We need learning to face the future, to be realistic about the challenges ahead of us and to give people tools and language which matter. 
We need to scale global cultural action, which is rooted in localities and communities. Spaces for excellence, perhaps in every region, connected to communities and place and to one another. We have the advantage of having a lot of knowledge already, but not enough people doing it. And we also have, in this, at this moment, an opportunity to address systemic imbalances across culture, our own perhaps just transition. Let's design nature and net zero positive pathways, of course, for all cultural activities, but we need to ensure that the cultural economy supports everyone, the so-called levelling up agenda. What does that really mean in the context of culture? In my experience, young people especially are longing for it, and this applies internationally too. Some cultural economies, my own included, have to do the heavy lifting, have to make much more space. We also need to seek out and support those creative pioneers who have been doing this for years, perhaps for generations. Many in the, in the heritage sector understand this very well. We need to save what's being lost, tangible and intangible heritage for sure, and to learn from people who already know, perhaps whose cultural values are so finely attuned that they don't even think about it. There is no shortage of leadership. There is a chronic shortage of leadership support. Thirdly, we do need more evidence to make the case for culture for sure and to be accountable to Mother Earth. We need our net zero pathways and our nature data, but we also need data from the field, the living heritage alongside the storytellers and artists who are filtering the climate and justice crisis through culture. So investment into our people and our digital infrastructure to develop common metrics and frameworks and rapid knowledge exchange is urgent. If we agree that culture can change everything, we need consensus on what and how we collect evidence. And let's feed all of this back to policy, keep the pressure up. And let's feed it across to all other policy areas, not just cultural policy. We have so much to give. I hope we can do this because we need culture to be understood once and for all as the very best opportunity humanity has to meet our current crises head on. COVID-19 has plunged a cultural cult community into its own great reckoning. But isn't it interesting that faced with existential threat as so many in culture are, so many in culture, in culture have also been busy not returning to business as usual, but leaning into climate action. We need to bear witness better to this movement and we need to nourish the cultural ecosystem wherever we can. What about creativity itself? Well, I believe that creatives and artists respond to the context in which they work, the system and the values that support them. And we are seeing a flowering of art and activism, exploring what it is to be a human being in relation with one another and Mother Earth. In short, a valued shift. We need to support these voices. And it is happening. Creative resurgence is everywhere. So many artists, designers, institutions are reorienting to the future and for many on this path of exploration and reveal, the climate and nature crisis have been discovered to be all about love. This is the system change we need. This is our opportunity for transformation, for culture to love. Thank you. <laughs>